Hi, I'm James and uh, today I'm going to dive into uh, two uh, questions that I get often. Uh, the first question is, uh, what is it that I do in order to make progress fast on the saxophone? What's the one thing that you should do every day in order to really uh, get better quickly? So I'm going to go into that question. And uh, the second question I'm going to go into today is embouchure. How to use your lips and the mouthpiece to create a beautiful sounding uh, note on the saxophone for yourself. How do you do it? What are the details that you should really uh, give attention to, should practice on, uh, in order to cultivate a great sound for yourself? And uh, we're going to dive into the details on both those questions, so let's get started. Okay, so the first question, what is the one thing that makes all the difference when you're trying to make progress on the saxophone as fast as possible? What's the one thing you should really do every day? Now, there's many possible answers uh, to this question because there's you know, a lot of things that are important when it comes to playing the saxophone. But the one thing that I believe stands out above everything else is how long you practice. Now, uh, what I've discovered is that uh, when you're first starting, it's usually quite hard to practice longer than say 20, 25 minutes. Because when you're just starting and you've practiced for 25 minutes and you've, you know, you're really giving it your all, you're going to feel like <sighs> and your mouth is just going to be tired. You're going to feel all kinds of aches that you never felt before. And uh, you're not even going to be able uh, to practice on any longer than 20-25 minutes. But pretty soon you'll find uh, that that time starts to extend and extend. And uh, after maybe a month, month and a half, you'll be able to practice for a full hour without exhausting yourself completely. And uh, I think the most important thing that you can do if you really want to make progress as fast as you can is to keep it, and I also stress this in all my books, to really keep it at one hour a day or more. I mean, more is always, the more always the better, but at least at minimum one hour a day of serious practicing on the saxophone. Shorter than that, so say you're practicing half an hour a day, is really a, a way to maintain a good sound. So if you practice for half an hour, you won't get any worse. And you know, if you're just starting and you're practicing half an hour every day, sure, you'll, you'll slowly get better. But 20 minutes to 30 minutes is really sort of a zone where you stay the same and maybe get a little bit better uh, every time you practice. But whenever you go over 30, 35, 40 minutes and really go for 50 or 60 minutes uh, at a time, that's when you're really getting better. Arnold Schwarzenegger has this, uh, this great quote where he, uh, he used to be this big uh, trainer, of course, for, on how to do fitness and you know, get really muscular and do bodybuilding, all that stuff. And one of his golden rules was, uh, so I've heard, uh, was the last few crunches, you know, when it really hurts, those last, if you've done like a hundred, you've done this for a hundred times with the weight, at the last three or four times when you're really burning up and you're going, ah, and it really hurts, that's uh, when you're making progress. That's when you're building muscle. That's when you're getting better. And uh, that's what, what separates the champions from the regular folks, as, as Arnold uh, used to say. So the same rule applies to the saxophone. If you're practicing for half an hour, maybe a little more, you're doing great. You're maintaining what you have and maybe getting a little bit better. But if you really want to make progress fast, if you want to do, uh, if you want to advance every day, then practice for longer than 30, 35 minutes. Try to practice at least an hour every day. And uh, of course, there's, there's many ways to fill in the hour and you can do a lot of things within that hour uh, to make your practice as effective as possible. And uh, I've written many materials on how to, how to effectively do that. But the main thing is no matter what you do, if you practice for an hour a day, you'll make progress really fast. More is great, but no less. 
and you'll see that you'll you're get better every day and it'll be significant you know you videotape yourself playing something and then practice an hour a day for a month videotape yourself play the two tapes after each other and you'll really see like whoa I got a lot better so uh, that's really the big the biggest secret I think is practice at least an hour a day <laughs> So for the next subject, embouchure. Uh, embouchure is a very mysterious subject almost. And the reason why it's so mysterious, I think has a lot to do with the fact that everybody has their own take on embouchure. Everybody's mouth uh, is unique. So no two embouchures are the same. It's a bit like a fingerprint in that sense. And technically, if you were to look at some of the giants from the saxophone world, so the John Coltrane's, the Sonny Rollins, the Michael Breckers, those type of people, if you were to look from a purely technical uh, point of view at their embouchure, then many teachers would be able to shoot holes in their embouchure, while they're the greatest saxophone players, they would be able technically to say, well, his embouchure isn't quite right because his lower lip is a little bit too forward, or uh, there's too much tension in their upper lips or they'd be able to say lots of things like that so no one's really perfect and it's all opinion because if you sound really well and you're happy with the way it feels then you've got a great embouchure that's basically the only real rule uh, that matters but of course uh, people have been playing the saxophones for many decades and uh, over the time they found many general rules that apply to all of us which we can use to create a good sound. So that's really what this is about. And I'm going to uh, broaden the subject a little bit because I'm uh, talking about embouchure here, but embouchure is really how you hold your lips, it has to do just with the lips. And uh, all of the uh, various things that go into creating a sound is of course much more than just your embouchure, just how you use uh, your lips. And it's often a bit confusing for new students when people say embouchure, do they mean, what do you do with your mouth? You're just your lips, you know, where does the embouchure start and where does it stop? So just to make things absolutely clear so there can be no misunderstandings, the different items that go into producing a great sound on the saxophone are first, number one, your breath support. So uh, where does your breath come from? Does it come really from your diaphragm and muscles? Is there really good power uh, to your breath? The second is, uh, are you standing straight up? Are you keeping your air column straight? So the powerful air, air can cup, come up straight and go out through your air column and, and not be, uh, uh, be too much bended or, uh, or stopped in some way. Uh, then comes the shape of your throat and your mouth. So the different uh, shapes that you can make are like O, A, E. You know, you've got, got all these different shapes you can make with your tongue, which have a great influence on what you're going to sound like uh, on the saxophone. Then there is your lips, uh, how you uh, actually put your lips on the mouthpiece. And then there's the angle at which uh, the power is transferred uh, via the air, of course, into the saxophone, which uh, in the end creates the sound. So you've got those elements, the breath support, your air column, how the shape of your throat and your mouth is, uh, how you use your tongue, of course, and then the embouchure, your lips, and the transmission into the saxophone. All those elements play a part in what you end up sounding like. So, uh, let's start at the beginning uh, with the breath support. Now, when I say the breath support, what I really mean is the diaphragm, because uh, breathing, uh, from your, from your belly or uh, using the breath support is really breathing consciously using mostly your diaphragm muscles. Now in the, in the second book, Unleashing the Dragon, I go really deep into where is the diaphragm exactly, which muscles are you using? And this is a, a broad subject. I, I, I really recommend going online and looking up pictures of the diaphragm go maybe into medical journals and look it up and really get an image for yourself of where are these muscles that I'm supposed to use to play the saxophone? Where are they located exactly? Because you'll be quite amazed what it looks like and where it's located. Most people have a sort of a strange idea of where it is and what it looks like. 
so uh, that's that's step one know what it looks like the second one is you really have to grow a consciousness of the diaphragm muscle because we don't consciously use it it's uh, it's on the inside of our uh, of our uh, torso it divides every all the intestines in your belly and the lung space so it's like a like a wall that goes uh, from here straight through your body from the front to the back and uh, the way we use it to breathe is it pushes down filling the lungs and this creates the illusion of breathing through your belly because there are no lungs in your belly so whenever somebody says you have to really breathe from your belly and you have to you have to get the air to really come from your belly that's uh, sort of nonsense because there are no lungs in your belly there's no air coming from your belly what's happening is the diaphragm is pushing the, in the intestines outward a little bit because the space in your belly obviously goes smaller when the muscle comes down to fill the lungs and this creates the illusion of a rising belly you're not you're not breathing from your belly we're breathing from our chest you're just filling up your lungs completely okay uh, so that's step one really understand the diaphragm and the easiest and fastest way to really create a good uh, conscious feeling for this muscle is to stand on your head or to, to bend over and touch your toes and then breathe in deeply normally the diaphragm doesn't have to work against the gravity in fact uh, uh, part of what it does is it just relaxes and it lets gravity do the job of helping you breathe by just pulling uh, the, the diaphragm down through gravity so when you st uh, stand upside down or when you bend over your diaphragm all of a sudden has to work against gravity and you really feel uh, that effect you really feel hey i'm using this muscle somewhere in between my lungs and my my belly here and you can really feel it when you're standing upside down so uh, a good exercise is to bend over or stand upside down breathe in a few times really hold on to the feeling really grow a consciousness of it and then slowly stand up again or rise up again and try to keep that feeling and uh, that way you you can slowly grow your consciousness un until you really uh, can sort of feel it just like you're feeling your hand or uh, like a muscle in your like your belly muscles or your legs uh, so that's step one second part is your air column once you've really learned to breathe strongly from your diaphragm you need to really straighten up your air column so the air can come up straight and uh, go around one bend through your through your head and then go out straight so really and the more straight uh, you're, you're sitting or standing the easier the air will flow and the more power you'll put into your sound okay so once you've mastered these first two parts of creating a great sound uh, breathing strongly from your breath support from your diaphragm muscles and having a straight air column of course then the air reaches your mouth and there's various different shapes that you can make now there's all lots of controversy around exactly which shape is the best for which note and you can really sort of dive into this but I wouldn't uh, go go too overboard in general the rule is that the lower the notes you're playing the more your tongue should be lying flat on the on the bottom jaw and the more you go up uh, the more your tongue uh, rises in your mouth and starts to touch uh, the upper uh, part of your the upper your upper jaw so uh, shapes you can you can use to sort of uh, as, a, as a bridge to understanding what to do is the uh, the lower register is usually uh, uh, referred to as the O sound so when you say oh your tongue is really at the bottom of your mouth then going a little higher you can go to the uh sound so oh uh and you'll notice that your tongue comes up a little bit then from the uh we go to the e sound as in eating so oh uh e now you notice that your tongue is coming up quite a bit in your mouth and then for the higher notes so really the middle c and above uh, we use the e sound so we go oh uh e e or e, uh, which is really putting the tongue high up against the upper jaw creating a, a straight but very narrow uh, tunnel with your tongue 
uh, where the air has to go through and of course the more the smaller the tunnel gets the higher the airspeed uh, gets and the higher your notes get so uh, that's a great uh, trick and something you should really take into account because it makes a lot of difference uh, once your sound comes out uh, what shape you use to make the different notes so those are the first three parts steady strong breath support good straight air column and then use the right mouth shapes for the right notes. So lower register, O, uh, middle register, E, high register, E. Okay, and that's just something you have to practice. And as you go on and on, you'll find that uh, as you get better, you generally start at the lower register with your tongue just flat on the, on the lower jaw. And as you play higher, it'll slowly rise until uh, you're way up in the high register where you got this really narrow uh, sort of tunnel that you're creating with your uh, tongue where the air passes through. So those are the first three parts. <laughs> get to the actual embouchure uh, part, uh, the part with your lips. Now the most uh, important thing uh, here is uh, first of all uh, how much mouthpiece are you taking into your mouth. Now general rule it's really different for everybody because there's lots of different mouth shapes and sizes uh, is uh, to, to take about half of the mouth so your, your lips should end at about the halfway point so about halfway into your mouth and it should feel comfortable so if you 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 have you've got a really small mouth and you're, you're taking half of it into your mouth and you feel like that's not good just make sure it feels comfortable for you and uh, in general I would say make sure that you don't take in too little because uh, if you take in a little bit too much, that's something that with practice you'll overcome. But if you take in too little, it'll sort of siphon off some of the power of your sound. So better a little bit too much than a little bit uh, too little. But in general, just try to find a place that's really, that really feels comfortable for you. And as a general guideline, about halfway uh, on the mouthpiece, okay? Uh, little side note, some people tend to make a really big fuss on where to place the reed. Should it be a little bit up or a little bit down? Should it be just underneath or just above or exactly right, uh, right uh, uh, aligned to, to the top of the, the metal part? As you get better, you'll find that it doesn't really matter if it's a little lower or a little higher. The lower it gets, the more resistant it'll get, so you have to put in a little bit more power to, to get out the sound. The higher you put it, the easier it is uh, to blow. So if you got a bit of a softer reed, you can compensate by putting it down a little bit. If your reed is a little hard, you can bring it up a little bit to, to, to create the type of resistance that you're comfortable with. And those are kind of the general rules. In the beginning, it tends to matter a lot, but as you get better, uh, this is something that you can just compensate. Even if it's really crooked or sometimes I'm playing and there's a little piece missing or something will break off and it'll still work uh, just fine. Good, uh, back to the embouchure. Now an important part is that you always have to keep your upper lip as relaxed as possible. So uh, obviously the reed is vibrating against your lower lip. Uh, so that's where most of, the, most of the resistance and most of the tension uh, should be. And the upper lip should really uh, lay very relaxedly across the top of the mouthpiece and uh, shouldn't do any more, shouldn't be any more power or tension in it than is needed just to make sure to keep the air in. But that's it, that's the maximum. It should feel really relaxed. Now with the lower lip, it takes quite a bit of time uh, before you can really dive into all the details and all the, all the little differences that you can create uh, with your lower lip. Why? Because when you're just starting, you're paying attention to the larger things like where do my fingers go? Uh, you have to pay attention to your breath support. So you're, you're doing all of the larger scale uh, uh, movements and you're focusing on that and that's natural. So you know, don't sweat this stuff until you've been practicing for a little bit. 
but then uh, gradually you get to a point or you come to a place where you feel, hey, my fingers are kind of moving by themselves right now. I don't have to think about it so much anymore. My breath support seems to be pretty steady, pretty good. Don't have to focus on that anymore so much. And then you'll come to a place where you think, hey, now I can really focus and really give some attention to all the little details that I'm doing uh, with my lower lip. And a great way to practice this is by doing uh, mouthpiece exercises, which means playing the mouthpiece without the horn attached, because you can play any song you want uh, on just the mouthpiece alone uh, without the horn, because the horn only amplifies uh, the sound that we're making on the mouthpiece, because that's where we really are creating uh, the sound. So a good exercise is to play scales on your uh, mouthpiece or to play a little songs. And as you do that, you'll notice that the way to make different notes is really the shape of your mouth in combination with how you use mostly your lower lip. How much pressure are you applying? How exactly are you using it? And this is different for everybody, but this is really the way uh, to practice it. Now your neighbors are not going to like this because it's very loud and it's very high. Uh, you might even want to use some uh, earphones for yourself if you want to protect your ears a little bit. Uh, it's not really pleasant to listen to, but uh, you know, just as an example, uh, let's do uh, uh, Here Come the Saints on, uh, on just the mouthpiece, cover your ears for this. Well, etc, etc. Uh, that's a great way to practice getting better. And you'll really find that if you do a month, two, three months of uh, practicing just the mouthpiece for say 10 minutes for every hour that you're practicing, you're, you're practicing just on the mouthpiece, you'll find that your sound makes a giant leap forward uh, in quality. People re will really go, whoa, your sound's really improved. And usually it's, it's from doing just a mouthpiece exercise. It's a great exercise to do. Great, so now we have the first uh, four uh, elements of the saxophone sound. We have the breath support, the greatest strong breath support. We have the straight air column. We have the shapes, the different shapes that you're making in your mouth uh, for the lower and the middle and the high register. And uh, we have uh, your embouchure, so how to use your lips. Relax your upper lip and try to uh, train and cultivate as much uh, detail and finesse and subtle power uh, in your lower lip as possible by, make, by doing lots of uh, mouthpiece exercises. And then the last part, the fifth part of the equation, is the angle at which you have uh, the saxophone. Now something you often see with many saxophone players, no one's perfect and that's okay, is that they're either playing like this, having it angled kind of upwards, or too much downwards, like, and both uh, have a, a pretty uh, big impact on your sound. So the, the aim should always be uh, to make sure that you're blowing as straight as possible into uh, the mouthpiece. And you can hear it, now again, this is without the horn, so it's not a very pleasant sound, but you can hear the difference. Uh, it's, it's a great thing to try for yourself. Just put your mouthpiece on your neck and blow just the neck. And you'll find that if you angle it up and down a little bit, find this, this different effect it gives, whether you're angling upwards too much or downwards too much, you're uh, siphoning off a little bit of the strength. When you go upward, it tends to get sort of wavy and whiny. And when you go downward, it tends to get very hollow and it tends to overpower a little bit. So it's important to find for yourself, uh, it's sort of a zone where it's okay. And just find a place, find an angle where it's the most comfortable for you. And when you're blowing into the horn, as straight as possible. And take into account, of course, that you're standing straight up and that you're uh, adjusting your neck strap so it falls into your mouth uh, with, as, with as little effort as possible. And uh, beware, sometimes in order to, to have it fall into your mouth, people tend to sort of go backwards a little bit or, or you know, come forward with their neck. You really wanna stand up straight, keep your air column straight and then have the saxophone fall into your mouth at as straight as possible of an angle. It's always a little bit downward, but 
I think you, uh, you know what I mean when I say try to keep it as straight as possible. So uh, those are the five elements that uh, really, the five basic uh, technique elements that really go into creating a beautiful and brilliant sound on the saxophone. Uh, so take that into your practice. Strong embouchure, stand straight up, create a straight air column, use the right shapes of your mouth and throat uh, for the low, the middle and the high register. Train your lips, do lots of mouthpiece exercises and make sure uh, your posture is good and you angle your saxophone so uh, that you're blowing as straight as possible into the mouthpiece and into the horn. And uh, then you're on your way to cultivating a great sound. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, see you in the uh, next video. <laughs>